This presentation is intended for students of economics who are just getting introduced to the concept of supply and demand. And this part of the presentation is to explain what demand curves are and where they come from. Well, suppose that you've gotten hired as an intern at a large movie theater in town. Your boss gives you some data about ticket prices and number of tickets sold and expects you to do something with it. Well, the first thing you notice is that on one day, ticket prices for Friday afternoon matinees were $5, and on that day, 500 tickets were sold. Then for another Friday matinee day, the price was $8, and only 200 tickets were sold. So you plot that point on your graph as well. Now you plot them on a graph with quantity on the x-axis and price on the y-axis. Well, we suspect that the number of tickets sold depends on the price. But economists put the independent variable, price, on the y-axis and the dependent variable, quantity, on the x-axis. That's due to a tradition that I don't really have time to explain here. But on your graph, you've just illustrated something very important, which is the law of demand. The law of demand says that there is an inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity of the good that consumers are willing to consume. The higher the price, the smaller the quantity consumed, and the lower the price, the larger the quantity consumed. So any change in price causes a change in quantity demanded, which is an important point because we have to get our terminology correct, as you'll see later on. As price increases, the quantity demanded decreases. As price decreases, the quantity demanded increases. All right, so this is common sense stuff that you see every day, but you'll find that a lot of times economics is the formalization of common sense. So we can see that more tickets were bought at a lower price than at the higher price, and that means we've fulfilled the law of demand looking at our data. And so it seems possible that we could draw a straight line through these two points, and so you go ahead and do that. All right, that line is what we call a demand curve or a demand schedule. And demand curves are always downward sloping because they are simply illustrating the law of demand. Well, one must always be careful to remember that a change in price moves us along the demand curve and never moves or shifts the curve. Right, we assume that the price is all that is changing and we're holding everything else constant, which is another thing that economists love to do. But suppose you find another data point for Friday that doesn't seem to make any sense. There was a time when the price was $11, but at a whopping 800 tickets were sold. And that doesn't seem to make sense because it doesn't seem to follow the law of demand. How can a higher price have caused more ticket sales? Well, the answer here is that there must be something else other than the change in price going on. And that brings us to the concept of a change in demand or a shift in demand. When something other than the price changes, it causes us to move or shift to a different demand curve. When our demand curve shifts to the right, we call this an increase in demand. And when our demand curve shifts to the left, we call this a decrease in demand. And remember that a change in price causes a change in quantity demanded, which is totally different than a change in demand. All right, so here we are holding price constant, and we're changing something else. And that is moving us to an entirely different demand curve. All right, this picture shows an increase in demand. So note, for the good being sold, the price stays constant at $50, but for whatever reason, more units are being sold. And note that our drawing says that no matter what the price is, we would see more units being sold than before at every given price. Right, likewise, this uh, graph shows a decrease in demand. The price again stays constant at $50, but for some reason, fewer units are being sold. So we have to investigate what is causing these changes. Well, there are several factors that cause a change in demand. And I have an acronym that I like to use to help to remember them all. I use the word tender, which is spelled with an I, so T-I-N-D-E-R. And the first factor is taste and preferences. If you just get a hankering for something that you didn't have before, you buy more of it at any price. And that makes sense. The second factor is changes in income. If you earn less money, you may buy less stuff at every price, but that's not always the case, so we have to look closer at this factor. Right, if your income increases and you consume more of a good, then the good is called normal. So that's a highly technical economics term that we use. 
Right? If your income increases and you consume less of a good, however, we call that good an inferior good. And so ramen noodles would be the classic example of that, generic brand foods, those types of things. Things that you maybe wish you had more money so you didn't have to buy them. You wish you could afford something better. All right. So changes in income can cause us to consume a larger or smaller quantity of a good at any given price. Right. The N is for number of consumers. As a population increases, demand shifts to the right. And as the number of consumers in a population decreases, demand shifts to the left. Pretty simple. D stands for demographics. As the population of consumers changes in, say, age or ethnicity, the consumers may buy more of one good and less of another. For example, our current aging population is demanding more health care, so health care demand is shifting to the right. This factor is very similar to both taste and preferences and number of consumers, but it lets me use uh, my acronym for Tinder, so I keep it in there because it fits. E stands for expectations. Expectations also matter. If there was a rumor going around town that gasoline prices were going to go up next week, you can bet that everyone in town would go out and buy gasoline now at the current price, more gas than they would buy otherwise. Right, the last factor is the prices of related goods. Let's look at this factor a little more closely. But the first type of related good is a substitute. So if you don't have one of something, you're OK with another. Right, so Winnie's fast food is pretty similar to McDonald's fast food, and so we can use that as an example of a substitute. Right. The other related good is a complement, and that's something that's always consumed with another good. You usually serve hot dogs on buns, so when you go to the store and buy hot dogs, you make sure to buy enough buns for all of them. So we would say that hot dogs and hot dog buns are complements. Well, let's look at substitutes first. If the price of Wendy's french fries increases, then the law of demand says that people will consume fewer Wendy's fries. That's a movement up the demand curve for Wendy's fries. However, there will be an increase in demand for McDonald's fries, whose price didn't change. And that means that the demand curve for McDonald's fries shifts to the right. People will substitute more McDonald's fries to replace the now more expensive Wendy's fries. Compliments behave differently, however. If the price of hot dogs increases, again, consumers will buy fewer hot dogs. But now that they've bought fewer hot dogs, they don't need as many buns either. So demands for buns decreases. They're buying fewer buns even though the price of buns didn't change. So just to review, here are the factors that can cause changes in demand. If one of these occurs, holding all else, including price constant, it will cause us to be on a different demand curve. So let's return to our theater example. You recorded the one odd observation of more tickets being sold at a higher price. So you do a little research and find out that this showing wasn't an afternoon matinee. It was actually a Friday evening observation. Well, we can assume that people prefer to watch movies on Friday evenings, perhaps because they're off work for the weekend. That would be an example of uh, taste and preferences. So that's essentially a rightward shift of the demand curve. Right? We're getting more tickets bought at that time at any given price. So you go out and you find another Friday night observation. You find uh, on a night when the price of tickets was $13, only 450 tickets were sold. Well, now you essentially have two different demand curves, one for Friday afternoon at matinees and one for Friday evenings. So our dilemma is solved and this situation now makes sense. Well, thank you for watching this presentation. I uh, hope you'll go back and review any parts that you may have missed.